Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the peace of the Lord. Let's open, open our Bibles and Psalms. Chapter 18. Uh, let's, we are going to read only verse 19. Is it low on the back? Is it better? Okay. They lower mine and they increase the volume of the praise group. It's wrong. Mine, it's very low and the praise group is very high. Oh, that's all right. Best one. Psalms 18, verse 19. Amen. Let's read all together. Let's read it. Who doesn't have a Bible? It's there. On the projection, verse 19. Let's read. He also brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. Amen. The church may sit down. My brethren, this verse is so small. But we see that this verse it has um, a meaning that is very important. Because this verse it expresses what a soul, a redeemed soul, feels. This verse, it brings to us an understanding of the things, of what it is, salvation in Jesus. David, when he wrote this verse, he surely was going through moments that were very difficult in his life. If we read from verse 1, we'll see that how David was used by God and how he expressed himself there, saying what he was feeling. And we see that here, those are not words of a poet. Those are not words of um, uh, just a common man. But those are words that come from the soul. Because when the soul it finds, it meets Jesus, it feels like this. It ends up like this. David, before he said, ropes of hell, they tied me. Ties of death. Uh, surprised me, but in anguish I claimed to the Lord and from his temple he heard my voice and my plea came to his ears at his face as his presence. So David here said that he brought me to a spacious place. My brethren, sometimes you feel pretty tight the, wor the world tights, uh, puts pressure on us. Even though we live in a planet that is so large, with so much space, so many places, so much room, even though we live where we should have everything to, uh, at our reach, because that's why we were created for. That's why God created all things in order to make uh, man's life easier. Man was not created by God in order to live in the way we live in today. Man was created by God to, be, to live in His presence. But sin made man leave God's presence and now man feels... Uh, um, under pressure in every aspect. Financially speaking, I'm not even going to say anything. 
because the more you have, the more you feel the pressure. It's even funny. When you feel like something is getting better, and then at the end of the month, it's that struggle. I have to pick up here and there, negotiate there, and delaying your payments. If you're rich, you are always under pressure. If you have a little bit, you are under pressure. If you don't have anything, I'm not even going to say anything. But the world is like that. We live in Brazil. It's such a uh, difficult life. Selling lunch to buy dinner. <laughs> you think that it's going to get better a little bit, but it's very difficult. You can't find a job. We don't f find a way to you get your documents, it's terrible. When you go to the countries, it's the same thing. Japan. You go to Japan, people there are committing suicide. Youth, they are committing suicide. The largest percentage of uh, people committing suicide is youth committing suicide in Jap is in Japan. That's terrible. The world pr put pressure on us, pressures us uh, from every direction. And then you go to church, thinking that you have some sort of relief. The church is and it's so squeezed. People are trying to charge ten dollars to sit on the the chair there. And the sister is not gonna sit. He's not gonna pay. The brother is not gonna pay because he's standing. The world squeezes us. But the word says that David. He was brought by God to a spacious place. David left the, his trial. He left his place of anguish and, and difficulty and found relief to his soul. You know why? Because he found Jesus. He found a rescue. He found someone that loved his life. And every time that man meets Jesus, that's how we feel. Every time a man goes meet Jesus, he always lives blessed by God. It's not with riches that we are blessed. It's not with new house, uh, big bank account, new car. This all this is all ephemeral. This will pass. If it was because of this, if if it was not that. No, no famous pa uh, famous person would try to commit suicide or anything like that. Nothing of this life takes men, leads men anywhere, because everything passes. The only thing that remains is the Word of God. And when man meets the Word of God, he becomes a new creature. He now has reason to live. We are here. Here, in this place, God is present. Here, the Lord brought us for this spacious place, not physically, but spiritually. Because here, the Lord speaks to us. God brings joy to us. God renews us. God removes pain. God removes anguish, suffering, sadness. He operates peace. He pl places peace in our hearts. What we need the most is a peace of God, from God, not man's peace. I could ask you, how are you doing? Is everything difficult for you? Are you under pressure? It's difficult, right? It's difficult for me as well. For every one of us, each one of us. But in Jesus, I have a reason for living. In Jesus, we find something that makes us want to face the tomorrow. Because Jesus, he removes his life, his ephemeral, this physical life, and gives us the assurance of an eternal life. The space that David is talking about here, which is the soul of David was expressing, is the eternity with God. Because God has for us lots of space. In the house of the Father, there are many dwellings. 
And that's the place where the Lord wants to take us. And David was taken by God to that place. David was pouring out in God's arms. He had an experience that was um, remarkable and left a mark on his life forever. And the Lord, in the same way, Lord has brought us here, and the same way, Lord has brought you here tonight. It was not in vain. It was not by chance. It was so that you could uh, meet the space of God, because God's space is different than ours. Our well, space is limit, limited. It's high depth with this space, and only make us drown. It just puts pressure on us. But God's space it cannot be measured. God's time cannot be measured. There is no night, there is no day. There is only an eternity in His, pr in His presence. And that's, what David was, that's where David was taken to. That's where we are going to be taken. That's the place where th that the youth are taken when they are in the presence of the Lord. Because here they have freedom. Here they can praise the name of the Lord, they can express to the Lord the gratitude that they have, that they feel, because they youth used by God's hand. Because they are youth, they are here in the world, just like us. But they have reason to live. They are, they are not on the hands of the vices, of the drugs and the hands of the enemy of our souls but they are on the hands of our Lord because the best, best place to be is in the hands of our God the children also sing they are learning to know a true God a God that is love a God that is everything for them this is the place uh, in which the Lord has spoken to our hearts in this space in this place is so spacious spiritually speaking because God is speaking to man's heart. And David was brought, and we are also being brought to live this. Why? He says, He delivered me. He delivered me from what? From death. The soul, David's soul felt free from eternal death, away from God. And in the same way, God has delivered us from eternal death. Because the judgment that was upon us was completely destroyed by the power of the blood of Jesus. In the day that Jesus died on that cross, uh, uh, a path was opened up for us. So today we live free from the judgment of death. And now it's upon us, the judgment of eternal life in Jesus. That's why he said, deliver me. In the same way that we are f free in order to be here, to say tonight that I accept Salvation Jesus. A way, I want salvation Jesus. Maybe you may have never s said this, but you need to say this. Tonight you need to say with your own mouth, with your lips. Do you accept Jesus as your Savior of your life? And if you do this, you will see how your soul will feel free once again. Because every time man expresses and confesses to God in the presence of man, Jesus also make mention of us in the presence of God, in the presence of the Father. Maybe you entered here, maybe you're feeling under pressure, maybe regarding your health, maybe in your home, maybe at work, maybe you're in your financial life, maybe you're going through difficult moments, like many others are going through difficult moments. Ang anguish, because anguish does that. Man that is living in anguish is always uh, suffocated, always feeling under pressure. But tonight the Lord wants to remove you from, from this pressure. He wants to bring you to a spacious place. All of those that went to Jesus, I could have said many. In the prophetic service, um, we mentioned the, the woman with the flow of blood, she was in a difficult situation with her family. She was unable to be with her family members. Not even maybe embrace her child with her husband. 
and be with their parents. But when she met Jesus, she left with a cure. She was now able to see her relatives without hiding, without feeling the fear of being caught. She was delivered. She was cured. And uh, the robber in the cross next to Jesus, it was in the same way. He was there. I was living that life, the miserable life. He was a uh, criminal. And now there, on that cross, ne beside Jesus, ready to die. When he saw Jesus, he said, Remember me when you enter in paradise. And you know what Jesus said to him? Today you will be with me in paradise. Can you imagine what a blessing? You being there, knowing that you are dying, but knowing that you will fall on the arms of Jesus. That's that's what life is. That's what joy is. That's what is peace. You are facing your infirmity, a terrible infirmity, but you are knowing that Jesus is there beside you. And we see many uh, Christians like this. They are on the hospital bed, ill, but when you go to visit them, will live there with a greater blessing than them. How many people we see like this? People there are about to die, but spiritually speaking, they are stronger than us. Why is that? How can it be explained? How is, can it be explained? David said, because God, He delighted in me. God delights in you. God loves your life. God loves my life. And that's what God does that. That's why God extends His hand towards man. Because love, God loves man. God doesn't love sin. He doesn't have any agreement with sin, but He loves the sinner. And tonight, if you entered here, in this situation, you can praise the name of the Lord and leave this place renewed in the presence of Jesus. Placing God's altar what you're going through. Do like David. The gates of hell um, tied me. The death surprised me, but in anguish I pleaded to the Lord I, and He heard me. And you can do this tonight. This word is, that's so simple. But it's a very profound message. And the words of David because those were the words that came from within David's heart. It was not something that he said recklessly from human mind. Or, but no, that's how we feel. That's how soul feels when it meets its Creator. May, you, may the Lord speak to your heart tonight. May the Lord bring peace to your life. May God bring harmony into your home, into your house. May God tonight give to you the assurance of eternal life and that you may leave this place closer to God. That's our prayer. That's our service. Nothing more than that. The service was completely um, instruct guided by God because you were going to come in this place tonight. And that's why God brought you here, to hear this simple word. But if you accept this message, if you accept Jesus as the Savior of your life, and you speak with your own lips, you receive a joy, a peace that only Jesus can give. Amen. May God bless us. Let us hear a song. And you keep your eyes closed, praying to the Lord, placing God's altar your entire life, everything that has been oppressing you has brought has brought an anguish to you. That has removed your s sleep. Place it in God's altar, and you see how God will resolve your problems.
That's the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, it's Lord. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. My brother, everything that man needs is Jesus. We have Jesus. It's He is at our disposal. 
God loves the world so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross for you and for me. You just need to decree this. You just need to accept this. Because everything from this world is, is it passes and it, it extinguishes, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And that's what God has for us, is an eternal life. You want this? You want to live better? You want to live better in your house? You want to have spiritual health? You want to um, face uh, the struggles of this life, what you see around you, in a different way? You want to face the world in a different way? Allow Jesus to enter into your life. Allow Jesus to control your life. And you'll see how He will do this. Amen. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have two words of glorification to the Lord. You can pray again. Lord, when praise you because we came sad, but you spoke to our hearts. Have taught us to walk in the in this wonderful path, Lord. Praise you because we have assurance of having our name written in the book of life. We pray to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The other sister that was praying can now pray. I want to praise you, Lord, because of your son Jesus, because of the bread of life that came from heaven. I want to praise you, Lord, because your word is life and efficient. Because your word has made us follow you and remain with you. Because your word has been our sustenance, has fed our soul, has given us everything that we need. We want to exalt you, Lord. For the space that you've given to our lives and for your presence, praise you, Lord, because you have taught us to live as servants, as people that are dependent on you completely. We exalt your holy name, Lord. Because you are everything for us. Lord, we adore you. You give you praises in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Bless me in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless me in the name of the Lord. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bless be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. My brethren, the Lord has given a couple of spiritual gifts while we were praying for the service. The Lord has shown that entered here tonight a woman. And tonight she truly was able to recognize, to realize what is the forgiveness from God. She was living a, a life that was not according to God. But now God is giving you this condition. And now you can leave this place being called a daughter. Because Jesus, He loves your life. And you have truly the Father. A Heavenly Father. Amen. The Lord has also shown another woman that entered here. And she from this day onwards, after reading the word, after reading the thing the words of the Lord, the Lord is giving is giving her a better understanding about the mysteries of God. So we need to read the word of the Lord. Read about the path of the Lord. And you see how God will reveal himself to you. Do this. Take a few minutes, a little time, and read a few verses, read a chapter, read a chapter, and you see how God will speak profoundly with you. And the Lord also revealed about a man that entered here. This man has a thought that is like this. It thinks like that if he had more opportunity in his life, if things had uh, happened according in a different way, maybe he would have been would have been more successful and a better man. But you know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe you lacked opportunity, but now look, there are many people that are very successful. They are proud, egotistic, they are depressed, they are lonely, and they don't have peace. They have everything. But they don't have what is the most important, which is the peace in Jesus. If you want to have an opportunity of life, accept Jesus. Because only Jesus can change the life of men to a, a, to a, a better place. Only Jesus. There are people that are very successful, but they but they are evil. But if you want to receive this word from the Lord, God wants to give to you something that is greater than you think. You may be thinking, you know, measuring your life based on the, the things of the earth. But God wants to give you a, an understanding, an experience that it will lead to eternal life that will never end. Amen? Let us pray bring this service to a close and if you want to receive a prayer we we are here at your disposal we'll pray finishing the service but the service will continue uh, going in the way and the church and the, the praise group is going to sing softly and we're going towards you raise your hand or ask someone beside you to raise their hand in, on your behalf so we can address your, nece your necessities and pray for you so that the blessing of the God, the Lord, may be complete in your life. Lord, we want to praise your name for this wonderful uh, spiritual celebration. Because truly, you are here in this place. We can feel your angels walking among us. We can feel, Lord, the touch of, of your Holy Spirit on our lives. And by faith, we can imagine what is going to happen in eternity when we are forever in your presence when we are forever in uh, enjoying the banquet from your table we thank you for our call for the opportunity that you give, have given us for your word that is alive and among us receive our glorification our praise and our service adoration to your name and give a week of victories is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the, the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior 
Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forever. Amen. The church may sit down. This song, uh, softly, if you can. Uh, I don't ask too much. Amen. Just uh, playing the instruments. But if you want, if you want, raise your hand. We're going towards you. want to thank you your, for your visit. And we ask you that you come back again. Here the Lord always speaks to our hearts. Pensando. 